three. Just going to tell you that right off the off, off the bat. So, um, so speed and memory are things that I that I um, I, I mean I, I'm working on, and I feel I don't feel um, discouraged about it. I'm I'm sure I'll get there, but um, those are just it's just age related. So, yeah. I'll tell you that plenty of folks <laughs> much younger than you have the exact same experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, it's it's not you. It's the LSAT. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, so um, I've worked 25 years as a, as a teacher, a high school English teacher, and I'm just kind of ready for a new career. And I've thought about the law for a long time. And um, some of the things that I've enjoyed, I, I'm into puzzles and logic and that type of thing. Uh, and um, because I'm an English teacher, I also like writing. So um, just a couple of things aligned to make me decide to take this path. So here I am. That's awesome. Kudos to you for doing what you wanted to do, following your dream on this. You're never too old to go to law school. I see a lot of folks who are non-traditional students who doubt themselves, whether they have what it takes to with the LSAT or law school itself. And, and you do, this is just a hard process for everybody, but you can get there. Good. Great. Great. Um, so for our 15 minutes here, um, did you, Emma, do you want me to ask questions about the test or studying or how does this go? Ask me whatever you like. I can certainly ask you some questions if you'd like, but if there are challenges you're facing regarding your study program or certain sure. question types or about using the course in general, I'm happy to answer those. Oh, okay, great. Um, well, so I will tell you that I did, I took the LSAT in the spring. So um, when I made the decision, um, I just decided I'm going to study as hard as I can and get in the first test that I can and see what happens. Um, and um, and I got a 155, <laughs> which was which was fine. Um, it really wasn't much improved over what I had um, sort of assessed myself at the when, before my self study. Um, but I, I still felt like I learned a lot from my self study. Um, what I found on the and I took the flex by the way. Um, one thing that really got me was that what I find with the logic game questions, I, I like the logic game questions and I enjoy working through all of them all the way through. And it's very hard for me to get to a point where I will stop. And even with the timer <laughs> running on the upper thing, I, I completely lost track of time and I didn't save myself time to bubble in the ones we remaining. And I don't know if other people have that issue or not, but I, it's really hard for me to make myself stop working um, if I have to and, and just move on. So I don't know if you have any ideas about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. The time constraint is real. This exam is constructed so that most people will not be able to finish in the time allotted. It's yeah. an unreasonable amount of work they're asking to do in a very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, com that's a common issue. You definitely want to note when are there five minutes remaining so you can bubble whatever remains. With the online LSAT, just a, a couple of clicks to do whatever you got to do on that. But what I'm, I'm hearing, especially important to, for us to focus on here, is the getting bogged down, not being able to extract yourself yeah. from one problem if you're not making headway right. to move on to the others. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it takes practice to be able to let go of one thing if you really want to get it right, of course, but you have to pick your battles and know that. You can flag questions, skip them, come back to them later. Yeah, I always forget about that. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I know you said I don't have to take notes, but it's hard. That's another thing. It's hard for me to not do. But flagging questions is something that I forget to do. So um, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'll flag like four or five questions in a single logical reasoning section that I just don't want to deal with in the moment because they're too long or. I'm not really seeing what's going on there after I, or I just see after a couple seconds, Hey, this question's on a topic. I know nothing about, of course, the topic does not matter. It never does, right. but it can present difficulties naturally. Okay. So if I know it's going to take me time to parse out what's the structure, what's the logic, and I'd rather tackle something easier, I'll say, Hey, I'll get to that one later. Okay. And I think what will help me with that, um, through your program is figuring out the kinds of questions that I that I probably are, would be more likely to benefit from just leaving and flagging for later. So I'm thinking it's probably the global 
like the global could not could not be true or must be true questions I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. definitely. So in the logic games context, you definitely want to approach the questions in a particular order. There's no reason to do them simply in the order given. And you're right that global questions are some of the best ones to save for last because okay. you can attack them when you have already built a library of hypothetical scenarios that right. you can use. So why do a global before a local if the local could give you information that helps you solve the global? Okay, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, all right, something came into my head while, I, while you were talking, but I forgot it. So maybe do you have a question <laughs> for, to, to help me? Yeah, yeah, sure. And if it comes back anytime, anytime okay. now or later, we could, we could deal with it. Okay. I'm curious about reading comprehension because you talked about taking notes. Yeah. Have you spent much time looking at reading comprehension? Do you have a sense of how you might approach it in terms of the note-taking strategy? Yeah. Um, so on the um, with the online one, um, I've been using the different colored highlighters um, for um, author's opinion and then others' opinions, um, thesis statement, just I usually give it a quick scan. I see how many paragraphs there are, and then I highlight, uh, you know, I designate the highlighter colors to what I what I think is makes sense for me, um, and um, it's worked pr pretty well. I, you know, I think because I've been teaching English for the last twenty five years, reading comprehension is okay. I'm pretty good at reading comprehension, so um, I think that it it works all right. I, I really prefer paper and pen. I that's part of being a little old school. I think if I were able to take like a paper and pencil test, I, I would cover it with notes. But um, I just make use of the highlighters on the on the online version or the digital version. <laughs> no, great, great. Yeah, it is online, and that's great that it's working out for you there. Okay. What about logical reasoning? What's your do you take notes there? Um. Not as often. Um, I will sometimes if it's um, if it helps me sort out the argument, I will do that. But sometimes it seems pretty obvious what the argument is, and finding the answers doesn't seem like I, I need to take that step. But um, I haven't since I started um, with your program. I haven't done any of the logical reasoning yet. I've only done uh, reading comp and logic games. So. Okay, great, great. I find that students often try to take too many notes or make too many diagrams in logical reasoning. And so oh, I see. Okay. since you said that you're inclined to take notes, I just want to flag that as a potential thing to look at and be aware of when it comes up that okay. you don't need to be taking too many notes in logical reasoning. There's very few that I would actually write anything down for. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, yeah, as I said, I haven't, I haven't really dove into your materials on that topic yet. So um, Anyway, um, let's see. Um, I was going to ask if you, this is not so much LSAT, but um, you said you've worked with non-traditional students. Um, if you have any um, pointers on, uh, you know, either letters or resumes on, I, I, I struggled a, a little bit to try to come up with something to put, <laughs> something that makes me it doesn't sound like I've just been teaching and raising kids for the last 25 years, which is kind of what I have been doing, but I don't know if you have thoughts. There's nothing that. wrong with having made that Of course, <laughs> that's valuable and law schools will appreciate it. Law schools okay. love non-traditional students. Oh, okay. And there are actually many more non-traditional students than you might think, such that I think the whole non-traditional idea term at least is a misnomer. Oh, okay. Well, law schools will appreciate your experience. And as a teacher, there's a lot of great material you have from your career that you could incorporate into your application. You mentioned rec letters and resume, but of course there's also personal statement, other application essays associated. And so I'd look for you to call out what are the elements of teaching that oh. also apply to working as a lawyer? Oh. And there's one natural one that immediately comes to mind for me, which is that you're advocating for someone else. Oh. You have someone else's best interests in mind and you're yeah. supporting them right or wrong. You're helping them out for what's in their best interests. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you. That's a... Okay, that helps a lot. Um... I'd also look for you to not try to summarize your entire career. Okay. Mm -hmm. The more work experience people have, the more they want to share. 
but you have limited space that requires making some tough choices. So I'd look for you to focus on one particular element of your teaching or one particular story you have from your teaching career. Is there one particular student that comes to mind or one particular administrator that comes to mind or a colleague? And you can, of course, you can write a few essays, but I'd look for you to go deep and narrow on each one of those anecdotes or stories. And then, of course, you can call out implicitly where explicitly, oftentimes implicitly is even better if you can. Okay. Show, don't tell. Mm -hmm. Tell the stories that relate to your career as you could see parallels with the practice of law. Great. Okay, that makes sense. Similar advice that I give to seniors writing their college essay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so much of so much of that applies. Yeah. So if you've been working with folks on college essays, then that's the you already know a lot of what to do. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Great. Okay. And you're are you applying this fall? Yes. Yeah. Then similar to what I'm sure you advise your students, request those rec letters early. Yeah. Okay. Keep the resume concise, as concise as possible. I know with a longer career, that could be really tough. <laughs> that will be really hard. It has been hard. I mean, I've, yeah, it's been hard. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, um. And we have a lot of material on admissions in the course. We have weekly sessions oh. on admissions as well okay. with the consultants okay. on Niles and Unplugged that I'd encourage you to attend. Oh, great. Okay. I, yeah, I haven't had a chance yet to do that. So I will look into those, those materials as well. So. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I've really, so what I've, what I've done so far of the program is just a, a few of the recorded lessons, but then I've gone to, um, study session for reading comp and for logic games. And so far, so far, so good. I've enjoyed it a lot. I have. Fantastic. Well, yeah. keep at it. Keep working through the videos, keep attending the classes, ask your questions, get involved. Of course, you saw their study groups. You can connect with other folks yeah. going through the process. I will for sure. So. <laughs> awesome. Anything else for today? Uh, I can't think of anything else. I just need to. I need to get get going again. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, sure. I, I guess I ask, can I ask one quick thing. Yeah, uh, sure, sure, of course. It's like blocks of time for studying. I know you you have some suggestions about not studying every single day of the week, but is there a um, what do you think is an ideal time per day to put in? Well, how much, what other obligations do you have during this period? So I'm guessing that maybe summer is different for you than the fall. Yeah. So summer is, uh, is, is my time when I have quite a bit of availability. So, and my own two children are now college age. So, um, I'm pretty, uh, pretty free. Right Great. Now. So make the most of this period, make the most of the summer that remains. So I would suggest max four or five hours a day. Okay. Take breaks throughout, take a break for lunch take mini breaks. So maybe you do two and a half hours in the morning, two and a half hours in the afternoon. That's all you've got to do. And then of course, okay. if you want to attend a class, you can do that as well. Okay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do much more than that. This takes time to master. This is not a test of memorization. You can't cram it. Yeah. And if you're feeling like you're kind of done for the day, leave it. You can always come back tomorrow. And then once the school year begins again, and your schedule may be different yeah. then. If you can only do two hours a day, that's fine. If some days you can't do anything, that's also fine. But try to at least do a little something most days to keep the, the, the momentum going. Great. Oh, okay. One final question. I won't keep you, I'll try not to keep you over. No, not at all. Um, sure. How, um, so I'm scheduled for the October LSAT. Um, how far ahead of my application, like, like when should I stop? If I, if I do that and I think, well, maybe I better do the November as well. Is there a point at which I need to say, okay, I'm, I'm not signing up for anywhere else. That's I just have to, to be done. And how far ahead of the application deadline do you recommend people stop taking the LSAT? There's not really any hard, fat, hard and fast rule on this. Okay. And application deadlines are actually quite late. They've gotten later and later and admission officers do have some wiggle room on those sometimes. So I would always ask when in doubt or if you, if you need to, but I mean, we're talking deadlines could be February. They could be March. They oh, could okay. be later. Okay. There are people who take the April LSAT and apply that cycle. There are even some who take the June LSAT. Obviously it's going to vary from school yeah. to school, but okay. October, November, you're totally fine. The only deadlines you might run into around that are 
early application deadlines, like early decision, for example. Oh, I see. Okay. If that's not something you're considering, then October and November are both fine. And January is also fine. I can't think of a single school that doesn't take January. Okay. Is there any um, advantage to early, or, or what's, the, what's the advantage to early decision? Well, the advantage is that you might have slightly higher odds of getting in because oh. the school knows that if you are accepted that you will attend. So it helps their yield, which relates to in part to their status in the U.S. news rankings. I see. But okay. the, there's a big drawback, which, of course, you lose your other options and you also lose scholarship negotiation leverage because you're saying no matter what you get in, you're going to oh. go. Okay. So I rarely recommend doing that. I, I typically recommend against it for most folks. Okay just to keep your options open and be able to do some negotiating on the scholarships because law, hey, law school's expensive, you know, and yeah, yeah. you've got a high LSAT score above their medians, they'll give you scholarship money. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, okay. I think, I think I'm done with my questions. Great. Well, it's great to meet you, Maureen. Keep at it. And reach out with any questions. Happy to help. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.